Okay, so we're just kind of working on stuff today. Um, the E90 is still doing very well. The problem is the IBS sensor, the battery battery sensor system, is not doing well. Something happened just that fast. I'm sitting there not being touched. Something happened with it. You know, oil that door. And um, now it's throwing that. So now it's throwing, even though it's not overheating or anything, it's throwing no power to electric water pump via IBS system and all that stuff and it's relentless um, other than that there's no running problems at all we get a very random uh code for the vanos intake i'm not exactly sure that's not related to that uh battery system that only does the vanos code on cold start only only so other than that that car is kind of done for right now and these parts this car hopefully is about to drive with no faults at all. This is the new vacuum pump. Remember that's the only fault code this whole car had was the damn vacuum pump and it would run for a little bit and blow the fuse in the glove box. So I'm guessing something was messed up inside the pump. Let me pull this housing off, we'll put the head cam on and we'll swap it out. It shouldn't take me just a few minutes. And the symptoms of this pump going by, I didn't want to throw the code all the time. We'd only throw it if you would start it up, here comes FedEx. If you start it up and just not let it warm up completely and take off, like I went to the post office, I just barely drove it, or you try to drive it in my driveway with it, and it just won't happen. You know, you have to let it not only warm up the temperature, like let it idle for even longer than up the temperature, and then we'll never throw it. Yeah, so anyway. GPS is backing up there. He was saying how busy it is right now. I guess everybody's going back to work. Everybody's got money again. He says it's just like Christmas time. What the hell's he doing back there? So here's the pump. This FCP on there, ECP. So this, let me grab a screwdriver. But it's getting to be a mess. We were working on stuff all the time, and it'll take long for this place to get a get to be a real train wreck. There's that. That comes, we have to get new ones of those too. We need to get those, we need to get, make a decision on the air filters on this car. We're gonna do those or we're gonna do what we're gonna do with those. Let's pop this out. And that's pretty much it. We're down to it right there already. Uh, looks like we have, well we got two tins, two tins and one hose. And it should pull out, it's just one plug. It looks like it's all correct. So let's zip her out. Yeah, let me get a stension for that. So I, don't, I haven't really found anybody else having an issue with these going bad. However, we checked the electrical connection, everything was fine. And it's definitely bad, but not all the way bad. Makes me wonder how many cars just, they are bad and Or just driving around with bad ones and probably don't even know or don't care. Very possible. Let's take this out of there. Next up, is that going to release or is that going to be a pain in the ass? What we got running here? We got it done, but boy, that hose is a real pain in the butt. Once those clips get a little bit dirty, they don't work anymore. So I finally sprayed WD-40 in it and got it released, but you get the gist of the idea. 
like I said before, I haven't really seen many people with this issue. This car has that problem. We replaced the fuse. The fuse is number 23, I believe, 22 or 23 on the pre-LCI models. So if you have this issue with the vacuum pump error, uh, make sure you do the fuse first. Let's go ahead and, well, let's wait to start it up because we can't hear ourselves think whenever we crank it up. All right, so right away we got everything's green. So for the Bluetooth module and the IHK, which I believe is the little sensor by the air box, we had to borrow the plug off of. Light module for the LED lights. And that's it. So let's just display, see if anything pops up. Turn signal, brake light. We decode all that crap off. Turn signal, AC sensor, fogging sensor, TC fault memory. Okay. Let's just delete, even though it doesn't matter. We're going to start it up. Usually what it does, right before it throws a code, it'll run a little bit weird and it'll kick the code. Let's see. You couldn't tell till you drove it. So let's let it warm up a little bit. We'll turn it back off. We'll pull it out of the shop. We'll turn it off. Let it sit for a minute. Leave this open. We'll go drive it and see if it comes back on. All right. So just turned it off. I start it back up. And let's get it on the highway here and see if it's going to throw the code to it. Didn't want to go just kind of stumbled around a little bit and didn't really make the appropriate power what it should have hmm let's look and make sure Sport 500, so we're in the big. So, why are we not making power? Now we are. Oh, god, and be careful here because there's people around, so I want to go slow. So, I mean, you know, why would we not get on the power the first time? I really don't know. The bad part about these M5s, well, as you can see, this channel, any BMW, they're so quirky. Especially, this is like the worst BMW of all time as far as quirkiness. Um, you know, it was warmed up. I don't know why it wasn't up on the power. It has Super and LED, it has 93 in it. You know, and then the second time it did. Weird, right? We'll get back to the house. We'll run a little bit and rescan it and see what else we got. All right, scan it again. Let's go back at it. Let's turn it off, start it back up. We got a code in DME, let's see what it is. So we finally got secondary air pump. You remember I unhooked that. I've never seen that that code ever come up. We can always plug it back in, but it's not giving us a code, like it's not a code on the dash or anything. It's like just like a background code at this point and our fuel cap signal i think we're going to have to do with that eventually is in the same way that doesn't cost a, a check engine light i think we'll have to um do those little pumps back by the tank those little evap pumps i think there's two of them on this car they weren't that much they were like a 100 bucks but everything's 100 bucks or a thousand bucks in this car right so yeah i mean there's all that i guess maybe it could never throw the secondary air pump because the fuse is always blown for the 
vacuum pump. Maybe it's on the same loop. That's interesting. All right, we'll go and shut this down.